It's 6 p.m. on a Friday here in Korea. Welcome to our newscast. I'm Daniel Che. Let us begin with the headlines. President Bakunet celebrates more than a century of diplomatic ties between Seoul and Paris with a visit to a K-pop concert and Korean cultural convention. It's just some of the several events organized during her trip designed to give the French people a taste of Korean culture. In South Korea, policies to battle the ever-increasing level of fine dust are unveiled. They include restrictions on aging diesel cars and coal-powered thermal plants. Huawei, with the ambitious goal of taking on industry leader Samsung, is under investigation for possible dealings with sanctioned nations. The U.S. asked the Chinese telecommunication giant to submit all relevant information. A series of Korean cultural events has also been launched in France to complement President Bakunet's visit this week, from exhibition and performances to what's being billed as the world's largest K-pop concert. EG1 provides a glimpse of this promotional extravaganza. K-pop stars Shiny, Block B, and more were in France on Thursday night to kick off the week-long K-Con festival. The concert hall in Paris was jammed with K-pop fans from around Europe who were singing along and screaming themselves hoarse. Billed as the world's largest K-pop concert, it was organized to celebrate the 130th anniversary of diplomatic ties between Korea and France. And in a sign of the significance of the occasion, the concert was attended by a special VIP guest, President Park geun -hye. The Korean leader is in the country on a state visit, and she was there to highlight the importance of cultural events and exchanges between the two countries. Speaking after the event, designed as part concert, part expo, she said that it's showcases like these that are helping to make Korean culture known to people around the world. Later on, she and members of pop group SHINee also took a moment to sample Korean treats. <laughs> K-Con is just one of the cultural events organized to coincide with President Park's visit to France. The convention is a seven-day music and cultural event being held in nine major cities, including Paris, Nantes, and Nice, to highlight both traditional and contemporary aspects of Korean culture. Other cultural events going on during the president's visit include screenings of Korean dramas and movies, fashion shows, and food events, as well as performances featuring classical and contemporary Korean music, including pansori music storytelling and samul nori percussion. Ijiwon, Arirang News. And in a few hours, President Bak and her French counterpart are also set to sit down for talks. For more on the leaders' in-depth discussions on a variety of topics, including the economy and security, do tune in to our later newscast. Moving on, the two countries' friendship has evolved to a point where they go beyond basic cultural exchange. They're sharing a number of cross-cultural creations in various forms, including the arts and food. Oh Seung points out some of these fantastic hybrids. Seesaw through the chromatic lens of a renowned French photographer. More than 120 images capture seemingly normal aspects of the Korean capital, magnifying the quirks of daily life with dazzling colours and angles. The exhibition is an example of how exchanges between Korea and France have inspired cross-cultural works. French culture celebrates diversity, and Korean culture is seen as unique in that, while Eastern, it blends well with Western elements. That's what fuels culture exchanges and produces a synergy effect. To the west of Seoul, five full-size 3D replicas of Lascaux cave paintings in France have been recreated outside Gwangmyeong Cave, an industrial and cultural landmark in its own right. The UNESCO-listed relics are displayed in an exhibition hall designed by a famous French architect, Jean Nouvel. The exhibition is a cultural collaboration between Korea and France, East and West, and where prehistoric and contemporary times meet. It's not just art and historic artifacts. The cultural fusion is going mainstream on the streets of Seoul and Paris as well. Take this cosmetics company, which infuses Korean skincare routines centered on natural ingredients with France's dynamic beauty culture. Korean women have really a beautiful skin and it's really appealing. And they, you know, I just wanted to bring this, you know, knowledge of uh, perfect skin to the world. So basically we take the very powerful Korean ingredients and we push them through French technology and French design and French sensoriality. 
And when it comes to fusion, you can't forget the two countries' culinary delights. A Korean bakery franchise in Paris has fused Korea's traditional red bean bun with the light and airy softness of a brioche, with an extra layer of vanilla cream. The buns fly off the shelves, and even French President Francois Hollande has tucked into one. I love dropping by on the way to work and having one with a cup of coffee. It's quite light, so it's perfect for breakfast. Thanks to its success in France, the bun was also introduced in Korea last year. Total sales have already surpassed 10 million. As we mark the 130th anniversary of Korea and France's diplomatic relations this week, there are many ways to celebrate this friendship with the best of both cultures. Also Young, Arirang News. Koreans are becoming accustomed to hazy skies these days. While almost half of the impurities that create them are flown in from outside the nation, the Korean government isn't standing idly by. Oh jung outlines some of the strategies they formulated to tackle the disturbing level of fine dust in the air. To counter the serious and day-to-day -day threat of fine dust, the Korean government has rolled out a new set of policies. The government cited National Institute of Environment Research and explained that 30 to 50 percent of the fine dust in Korea comes in from other countries. As for the domestic causes, diesel cars are the biggest generators of fine dust in the Seoul metro area, causing up to 29 percent of the particulate matter in the air, and factories produced up to 41 percent of the fine dust nationwide. To remedy the situation, the government is seeking to enact tighter restrictions on aging diesel cars and coal power plants. Diesel cars produced before 2005 will be destroyed by 2019, and the government will expand the number of eco-friendly cars from 2.6 percent to 30 percent by 2020. On top of that, old diesel cars will be banned from the capital region, and diesel buses will be replaced with buses powered by compressed natural gas. In addition, coal-powered thermal power plants that are over 40 years old will be shut down, while new power plants will face strict environmental standards. Of the 53 coal power plants in Korea, 11 are over 30 years old, and three have been in operation for more than 40 years. Ten coal power plants will be closed down, and the most strict emission standards will be imposed on nine newly built plants. The government aims to bump up the air quality to match Europe's. It will also expand its cooperation with the neighboring countries, as that's where a good deal of the fine dust comes from, and further strengthen its dust forecasting system. Oh jung Arirang News. The defense chiefs of Seoul and Washington are scheduled to meet this weekend at the Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore. According to Arikana Kim, there are conflicting reports on whether they will discuss that deployment in Korea. The South Korean government says the potential deployment of the U.S. missile defense system will not be on the agenda at talks this weekend between the defense chiefs of the two allies. Seoul's defense ministry was forced to issue a denial after U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter said he expected the issue of the SAT deployment to come up during his meeting Saturday with South Korean Defense Minister Han min -gu. Carter had told reporters that that was not something the two allies needed to discuss much because the plans were already moving forward. He also emphasized that the deployment was an alliance decision. Seoul has thus far exercised caution on the matter, not wanting to reveal too much about its discussions with Washington. We're not at a point where I can explain the process of discussions. At this point, we cannot prejudge when discussions will be finished. Shortly after North Korea launched a long-range ballistic missile in early February, the two allies announced they would officially enter negotiations for the deployment of the defense system that can counter the growing missile threats posed by Pyongyang. A joint working group for the THAAD deployment launched in early March, and the two countries were expected to discuss possible locations for the system, costs and environmental issues. The speculation is that with China joining the international community to impose sanctions on North Korea, Washington is pushing ahead to accelerate the deployment of the U.S.-made missile defense system to South Korea. A number of U.N. member states have submitted their action plans for implementing the latest UNSC resolution on North Korea. More unilateral measures by individual countries are beginning to take shape, too. Kwon Sowa has the latest. 
South Korea, the U.S., the U.K., Japan, and Russia are among the roughly 20 countries that have submitted implementation plans for UN Security Council Resolution 2270 imposed on North Korea for its nuclear and missile tests earlier this year. The 193 UN member states were to submit reports on how they would follow through with the toughest ever sanctions on Pyongyang within 90 days of the resolution's adoption. South Korea's foreign ministry revealed its own action plan and the measures taken so far earlier this week, which include its suspension of the inter-Korean Kaesong industrial complex. China, which, as North Korea's closest ally, plays a major role in how effective the UN sanctions will actually be, has not yet submitted its plan. Although the majority of UN members have not submitted their sanctions implementation plans yet, officials say more are expected to do so in the near future, as delays have been common in the past. Meanwhile, other individual sanctions are taking shape, too, with the EU having recently adopted financial restrictions said to include a ban on transactions with North Korean institutions amounting to more than 15,000 euros. In line with this, the UK Treasury designated North Korea as a primary money laundering concern on Thursday, after the US made the same designation the day before. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. The U.S. Department of Commerce has requested Chinese telecommunications company Huawei Technologies submit all information regarding the export or re-export of American technology to sanctioned nations, and that includes North Korea. According to the New York Times, the subpoena demands Huawei turn over information related to such shipments over the past five years. It is part of an investigation into whether the Chinese up-and-comer broke U.S. export rules. Huawei's local rival ZTE Corporation has also investigated for similar reasons in March. It is worth noting that the U.S. Department of Commerce has not yet accused Huawei of any specific wrongdoing as the investigation is still in its preliminary stages. The top economic policymakers from North Korea and the U.S. are meeting in Seoul as we speak. Korea's finance minister Yu Ho is holding talks with Jack Liu, the U.S. Treasury Secretary. With no set agenda for the meeting, all eyes are on whether sticky topics such as currency issues, sanctions on North Korea and Seoul joining the Trans-Pacific Partnership will be discussed. Earlier in the day, Liu held closed-door talks with Bank of Korea Governor Lee ju but nothing is known yet about the outcome of that meeting. Liu is in Korea ahead of the U.S.-China Strategic and Economic Dialogue to be held in Beijing next week. The latest finding by Korean researchers on the Zika virus shed new light on a possible transmission route. However, the Korean CDC's announcement that it had already made the discovery but didn't make its findings public raises questions about the individual right to privacy versus public health concerns. Lee Min-young has this report. A live Zika virus has been extracted from a patient's semen for the first time in Korea. A research team at Seoul National University Hospital says they have detected and separated a living sample from a Korean patient through genetic testing. The paper was published Friday by the Journal of Korean Medical Science. The researchers say their findings support evidence that sexual transmission is a powerful channel of infection, and it shows Zika is not just a problem facing other countries. This runs counter to the common belief that Zika was transmissible only through mosquito bites or blood transfusions. The researchers also said the findings underscore the importance of taking preventive measures, such as abstaining from unprotected sex for a certain period of time after a diagnosis, but added that further study is needed on the survival rate for the Zika virus in semen. Also on Friday, the Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention verified the researchers' findings, saying it already made the discovery but didn't make its test results public because of privacy concerns. The number of confirmed Zika cases in Korea currently stands at five. All of them contracted the virus while on trips outside of Korea. Zika has been linked to microcephaly, a condition that can cause babies to be born with abnormally small heads and underdeveloped brains. Lee min -young, Arirang News. German passports seem to be the most powerful in the world in terms of travel freedom, which refers to the number of countries citizens can visit without needing a visa. 
According to UK-based firm Henley and Partners 2016 Visa Restrictions Index, Germans hold the most valuable passport with visa-free access to 177 countries. The immigration and citizenship firm also released its Quality of Nationality Index, which ranked more than 160 nationalities on two counts. Internal value, which looks into the nation's economic power, peace and stability, and external value, which measures the number of countries that a citizen can travel to. Korea came in 36th following U.S. and Japan. The top 30 countries were mainly European countries, boosted by economic integration and the right to free movement and work. We have come to the end of this hour's newscast. For more updates, do tune in at 10 p.m. Korea time. Thank you for watching.